Previously on Silver Sun. It's too good to be true. It's just like Earth. Let's call it Blue 2. Nice. The point is we could land and live normal lives right now. In the absence of any reliable data, I've decided to forge on. I can't go back to the way things were. Pretending everything's fine. Then you have to stand up to them, once and for all. I don't think I can go alone. You don't have to. I'm with you, Deegs, every step of the way. Star Runner leaves on its 90-year journey to the New World. On board, an elite young crew and 550 settlers frozen in suspended animation. Lock-in coordinate change. New course locked in. Prepare to fire boosters. Full power in five seconds. Hold it, Steve. A bit longer. Speed now 250 kilometres per minute and rising. Gravity. It'll do it every time. Booster rockets prime for firing. Distance from surface now 1,000 kilometres. Hold your horizon line, Tone. We need to get to the exact point. Speed 500 kilometres per minute. Entering outer atmosphere in five seconds. Hold it steady, Tone. We're almost there. Three, two, one, engage. Increasing speed 50 k's. Take it easy, Tone. We've got to fire these boosters the entire duration. Acceleration now steady. And disengage. We're now out of orbit of Blue 2 and in free space. <sighs> and that, my friends, was perfect. Well done, Tony. Now that we're back on course, I'm sure you're all fitting back into your routines. There is one more departure from routine to come, but this is an exciting one. Glad to see you could find the time to join us, Mara. Sorry, my alarm didn't go off. Yeah, go on. Blame a machine. Just as well you made it. Tomorrow, at 0900 hours, set your alarm for 0800, Mara. We are hooking up with Earth via holophone. <laughs> and that would be exciting how? Because unlike other holophone conversations, this will be with five billion people. He's going to pay the phone bill. Mission Control has organised an interview that will be beamed live around the world. Well, what are you going to say, Commander? <laughs> Not me. The interview will be with one of you, about what it's like to be young and in space. I could think of a few things to say. I'm sure you all could. But, due to time limitations, only one of you will have the opportunity. And it's up to me to choose the spokesperson. Now, it hasn't been an easy choice. But I think one of you has been performing above and beyond expectations for some time now. So I think this is a fitting reward. Brrr. And the winner is... The spokesperson is... Mara. <laughs> What more do I have to do to get some recognition around here? I don't know. I can't believe you picked her. She's good at what she does. And I'm not. I piloted us through that orbit. Sirak said it was a perfect manoeuvre. He said it was a hard choice between you. Hey, she was even late for the meeting. It doesn't matter what he says. We both know you'd make the best spokesman. And he thinks it's fair. 
It's also typical of how this place works. The crawlers that don't ask questions get rewards. Yeah, right. Girl Scout Mara is going to tell everyone back on Earth that life up here is one big holiday camp. Just because we lost the vote to visit the planet doesn't mean we should give up. I'm not. <laughs> hey, psycho. You better like rubber because you're going to be eating that ball. Whoa, we're really scared. Oh, big mom. Probably not the best way to win people over. I could win them over with a chocolate bar. That is what Mara will be handing out to the people watching on Earth. If only we could get a chance to voice our views. But there's no way Syrax would ever let me talk to Earth. He knows he can't control me. What if he didn't know about it until it was too late? There's got to be a way we can patch our message into that broadcast. <laughs> I really wish there was some way we could all be part of this. No, you deserve it. Besides, I don't think Earth is ready for Sheng's bad jokes. Bad jokes? How come I was off on my own late show just before we left? Really? Yes, they were going to call it Sheng Soi. That's French. That's Chinese. I think you mean Sheng Soi? Yeah. I only hope I can live up to it. Oh, enough with the modesty. What are you going to wear? Well, you want to look your best, don't you? I suppose I do. My family will be watching. Not to mention 4.999 billion others. I guess I'll wear my uniform. Dress uniform and make up essential. You know how pasty people are going to look over the holophone. I do look kind of pale. Dr Shane can fix that. Well, maybe I should mix and match. What colours go best with my complexion? They shouldn't be noticing how you look. It's what you say that matters. Oh, Pancha, 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 you're cute but so naive. I've been meaning to talk to you about the benefits of lip gloss. Save it, Chief. I'm on duty. We should do something about the hair. What's wrong with my hair? <laughs> oh, you're serious. Star Runner is on course and all systems are functioning at optimum level. Where's Leonella? I don't know. She must be running late. She is rostered on duty. Yes. The shift started half an hour ago. What does she think she's doing? It's no big deal. Everything's running smoothly. She knows there must be two people on deck at all times. It's not fair to you. I can track her down. No, that's all right. I'll do it. Thank you. Leonella, please report to sick bay immediately. We'll be with you soon. Thanks. I wasn't feeling very well. Why didn't you call in sick? It was just a headache. I thought it might go away. Where were you? In the dorm. You weren't there when I checked. I went for a bit of a walk. I thought it might help clear my head. Anyway, Mum, I knew Pancha could cope. You know our procedures. All right. I should have let her know. But I really thought I was going to get there soon. And there's nothing else you want to tell me? Mum, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. I'll make up the time on my next shift, OK? And who's that with? I'm not sure. Really? Don't keep Pancha waiting any longer. All clear? Don't worry, I'll give you plenty of warning. All right, let's see what makes the communication system tick. Ah. What's wrong? Uh, it's level seven, I can't access it. Why would communication specs be confidential? Could just be routine security. Or there could be something about it that they don't want us to know. Like what? Take your pick. If you can't examine it, you can't question it. I know someone who has access. So, what happens to the holophone if the signal gets disrupted during a call? Why? Just think we should be ready for any emergency. Really? Is that why you tried to access the communication systems file? Yeah. Why should we be locked out of it? I don't know. <laughs> you know everything else, though, don't you? 
Besides you, who else has access to Level 7 files? Level 7 is restricted to officers and senior technical personnel. That sucks. Level 7 is confidential for reasons determined by Mission Control. So when did they okay your access to them? Just because I can access them doesn't mean that I do. Sure you don't. Like you, I have no good reason to be snooping through technical files that don't concern me. Well, I guess that's the end of that. Alright, so maybe we can't get our message broadcast. But why can't we try and influence what Mara's going to say? Start check routine. I really want to thank you for the opportunity. I wouldn't have selected you if I didn't think you deserved it. Fuel pressure in Fort Booster. 135.7. Check. Just hope I don't say the wrong thing. You can say anything you like in this interview. However, I think we want to paint a picture of hope for those back on Earth. Yeah. This mission means a lot to them. That's why I don't think we need to mention any of our recent internal problems. You mean the Deacon Hart Zandy problem? I know that our new crew member has caused some unrest amongst you, but that's not what the people on Earth want to hear. Talk about the discovery of the new planet and how we used its gravity as a slingshot to propel us onto our new world. Inspire them. Commander, I wasn't involved in that procedure. What's your reading on the starboard booster? But you know the theory. Yes, but I might get the details wrong. Well, that's easily Tame. fixed. Mine on the job. Starboard booster. Uh, 136.75. Tame, when you're finished with maintenance, could you brief Mara on what happened during our break out of orbit, please? Yes, Commander. You'll be fine. I felt like the whole ship was going to rip apart. And I knew I had to hold it on course no matter what. Right. Could you run through that booster firing procedure again? Why? I just want to make sure I've got it clear. It'd be much easier if I just told my story to Earth, rather than having you get it all wrong. Look, I didn't ask to do this. It's Syriax's idea. But I want to do a good job. Yeah, well, you can do it without me. I've got more important things to do. <laughs> That's right. Haven't you got to save our lives again in half an hour? Hey, Tane, thanks, man. Really? You shouldn't be so hard on him. Why not? He was taking it out on you. He's a bit upset. He's jealous and it's pathetic. All because you'll be talking to Earth like a hero and he won't. Well, I'm sure he'll get over it when he hears what I have to say. And what's that? I'm going to tell everyone down there what a great job this team does. Ah, so you're going to lie? No. I bet Syriax told you to say all this. Well, we agreed it should be positive. Don't you have a duty to report the truth instead of his lies? They're not lies. Right. So we didn't just leave a planet that could have been our home without good reason. Our crew aren't burned up with jealousy and we aren't sick of Syriax pulling our strings whenever he feels like it. Come on, Mara, what planet are you on? We're going to have to come up with some better excuses. You wouldn't believe what I had... Are we now? What are you doing here? Well, apparently I work here. Tane and I were rostered on together. There was a last minute change to the schedule. Tane's on maintenance detail. Why? Lillian just told me to be here at this time. So, do you want to work on those excuses vis-a-vis, face-to-face? Any stiffness in your joints? No. Blurred vision? No. Any other aches and pains? No. How much longer is this going to take? You're in my care, Zandy. I'll let you know when I'm finished. I need to talk to you. When I'm finished with Sandy. No, Mum. Now. You're being rude, Leonella. Don't mind me. I love rude. You had Tane transferred from all my shifts, didn't you? Zandy, can you come back in five minutes, please? Don't ever embarrass me like that again. You still haven't answered the question. Yes, I had him transferred. I thought it was in your best interests. Oh, really? You're focusing far too much on Tane and not enough on your duties. You had no right to do that. I had every right to do what I need to do to keep this mission running smoothly. The mission? This has nothing to do with the mission. This is about you trying to control me. Oh, come on, Nella. This is not like you. We always used to be able to sit down and sort things out. No! You stay out of my life. 
We always knew that there would be attraction amongst crew members. I'm just worried that things are going too far, too fast. I mean, what's it going to do to the rest of them if Leonella and Tane are always together? There are some things that can't be handled by us. I've just never seen her so fired up. And you don't remember having the same argument with your mother? <laughs> yeah, but we weren't in outer space. I think you have to trust her. I do. I just don't want her to make the same mistakes that I made. Then trust that you've brought her up well enough for her to judge for herself. Mara tells it like it really is in that interview. Syriax won't be able to do a thing about it. Do you really think she will? Tane's jealousy put her on edge. Then I got to her with a few well-chosen facts. She's already cracking. Can you imagine the look on Syriax's face if his star pupil starts blabbing the bad news back to Earth? <laughs> Mission Control will be asking for a please explain within minutes. His two star recruits at each other's throats. Lena are freaking out with her mum. <laughs> Syriax is losing his grip. Mm -hmm. And it's all his own fault. He'll have to listen to us then. Are you sure I look okay with it up? It really suits you. Sheng? Mara, trust me, okay? It looks, you know, military yet feminine. It's hard to do. I've never had to think of these things before. What's my family going to think if I muck it up? Yeah, if five billion people laugh at the same time. Won't we be able to hear that in space? Cinnamon. Yeah, Cinnamon, you know sound doesn't travel through space. <laughs> However, on Earth, it'll cause tidal waves and... Shang! Yeah. Mara, relax. OK, you're not going to muck it up. I wish I could believe you. <sighs> in fact, you know what? You're going to be sensational. Yeah, the best. OK. I think I can hold it together. Unless one thing happens. Well, what if they ask me how we're all getting along? Do I tell it like it is or how we'd like it to be? Sorry, I can't help you with that one. Just be yourself and tell the truth. This should be interesting. There she is. She looks really nervous. No, she looks great. Hello, Mara. I'll be out. Clean beluga. Hi. Oh, we have a few moments. What's he done with his hair? Online. Now, I have a short list of prepared questions, and that'll be followed by questions from children from around the world. Great. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Three, two. Hello, I'm Clayton Beluga, and today I'll be talking to Mara, who's currently millions of kilometres from our planet on board the spaceship Star Runner. Hello, Mara. What sort of a day is it in space? Day. Um... Oh, don't tell me she's going to flub the first question. Um, shh. <laughs> I had no idea that would be such a curly one. Well, space daytime is only relevant to your distance from the sun. And we have now travelled so far into space that it has no meaning for us. So we work to our own clock. Really? Yes. Space has no day or night as you understand it. But the weather in the ship is pretty good at the moment. <laughs> good one, Ma. And in doing that, we were able to use gravity to reach our escape velocity, the slingshot effect, without any drain on our fuel reserves. That was fascinating. Thank you, Mara. Now, on a more personal level, Tell me what it's like to live with such a small, tight-knit group on a spaceship. It's great. But surely there's arguments and fights. I mean, cramped conditions must make it very difficult to get along. Come on, Mara, tell the truth. You know, you'd think we'd all get on each other's nerves occasionally. And I'm not saying we don't have differences of opinion. We do sometimes serious ones. But that's a good thing. How boring it would be if we all saw things the same way. And we're like any group. We fight with each other, we compete with each other, we laugh with each other. Any problems we have don't last all that long. You see, space is just so wonderful and vast that any personal problems just seem so tiny in comparison. Mara, 
How do you keep yourself looking so cool in space? <laughs> Thank you. The truth is, we don't worry much about our appearances. Where, where do you do your shopping? Well, there are no malls in space yet, but I do have a pretty good hairdresser that I could recommend. That's me. <laughs> um, does your special diet and um, artificial gravity have any effect on acne? I've never really thought about it, but most of us are pimple free. Did you ever just wish you were a normal girl back in high school? No, never. I'm really lucky to be here. We all admire you. What you're doing is so incredible. Thank you. Yeah! Were you great or were you great? She was great. What are you talking about? I was good, wasn't I? Yeah, and thanks for the big wrap on my hairdressing skills. I don't know what I'm going to do when all the bookings start flowing in. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't so hard after all. No, it was fun. Hey, Mara. All that stuff you said about blasting out of orbit. Yeah. It was spot on. Well done. Thanks. Why don't we celebrate? Sounds good to me. I'll pick the music. Attention. What? New duty rosters have been posted. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> and what's wrong? No celebrations for me. All my shifts have been changed for the next month. I'm on duty now. Looks like you've got some serious frustration to work off. I'm so angry with my mother. Yeah, I got that. You know Tane and I have been seeing each other. I'm not blind. None of us are. Well, Mum's gone and changed all of Tane's shifts. We'll hardly get any time together over the next month. She's really trying to break you guys up. It's not going to work. You know, if you ever need someone to cover for you, just say the word. Will you do that? Hey, we've got to stick together on this tin can. You heard what Mara said. Mum will be onto me in a flash if I try and change anything. No problem. You've just got to get a whole lot cleverer about how you go about it. You mean sneakier? I mean, if we stick together, we can do anything. Hi. Hi. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you. I've still got an hour left on these maintenance checks. By then I'll be on watch, thanks to my mother. Yeah, she's got us at different parts of the galaxy. It doesn't have to be that way. Don't you want to see me? Are you kidding? But if Steve walks through that door and finds us... Don't worry about it. I've got it covered. What? A friend is looking out for us. Who? It doesn't matter. This is our time. I was thinking about you. Yeah? In fact, I can't stop thinking about you.